Welcome. In this video, we shall introduce the simplest method for solving linear programming problems. Our target is to solve the following LP problem. To maximize 3x plus 2y subject to the constraints, 2x plus y is less than or equal to 6, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8, and both x and y are non-negative. We will present the solution of the above linear programming problem by the graphical method and the simplest method in algebraic form. After understanding the simplest method in algebraic form, it would be easier for us to understand the simplest method in tabular form. They just differ by the formats of presentation. First, we observe that for this linear programming problem with two variables, we can use graphical method to solve for the optimal solution. By extracting all the vertices in the feasible region and comparing their values in the objective function, we get that the objective function has a maximum value of 32 over 3, which occurs at the point x and y equals to 4 over 3 and 10 over 3. We can refer to the following deduction and the corresponding graph. Now, let's see how we can use the simplest method to solve the same problem. Just to recall that we wish to maximize this 3x plus 2y subject to these constraints. First, we observe that all the right-hand side values in the constraints are positive and all the variables are non-negative. However, the constraints are inequalities containing the less than or equals to symbols. Thus, for each of these two constraints, we need to add a black variable to the left-hand side so that the constraint can be written as an equation format. Thus, we get 2x plus y plus s1 equals to 6 and x plus 2y plus s2 equals to 8 where these variables are all non-negative. We wish to maximize 3x plus 2y which we wish to denote it by ez. Please notice that whenever our problem is to obtain maximum for an objective function subject to constraints which are represented as equation with non-negative right-hand side values in each constraint and all variables are non-negative, then our problem is now in standard form. We shall solve this by the simplest method. Its idea is to first find a vertex in the feasible region as a starting point. The procedure is as follows. First, we bear in mind that the variables are all non-negative. Then we treat the equations representing the objective function and the constraints as a system of linear equations. Thus, it is better for us to think of our system to be in this format, where I have rewritten the objective function so that all variables are moved to the left-hand side and the right-hand side consists of a constant, just as the same way as those constraint equations appear now. We see that this system of linear equations has five unknowns and three equations. Therefore, we know that there will be infinitely many solutions. We wish to suggest one solution as the starting point. You can see that we can take x equals to 0 and y equals to 0, and the other variables can be obtained accordingly. If you are not convinced, you can imagine that if I interchange the order of writing the variables in the equations, we shall see more easily that the corresponding augmented matrix is now in the following shape. The reduced row echelon form. The triangle that I draw here represents the pivot positions. They are the only entry in the corresponding column that is equals to 1 
and all other entries in that column equals zero. With this system, we can easily suggest that x equals to zero and y equals to zero. In this case, we get s1 equals to six, s2 equals to x, and z equals to zero. Therefore, taking x equals to zero, y equals to zero, s1 equals to six, s2 equals to x, and z equals to zero is one possible solution to the system. This corresponds to having a point x y equals to zero zero, which is a starting vertex in the feasible region, which z equals to three x plus two y equals to zero is its corresponding output value at the point zero zero. To summarize, this is the optimization problem and a solution we obtain in this stage. Now we make a judgment on whether or not we have reached an optimal solution by checking whether we can further increase the output value. We do so by checking the sign of the coefficients of each of the variables in the objective function. Remember that all variables are non-negative. Thus, having 3x and 2y means that if I increase the value of x, or if I increase the value of y, we can increase the value of z. Therefore, we have not yet reached an optimal solution. Besides, since 3 is greater than 2, hopefully, the value of z will increase faster if we increase the value of x. Thus, our target is to increase the value of x now. Now, to what extent I can increase the value of x? To answer this question, we can observe our two constraints to see what restrictions are imposed to x. From the first constraint, we have 2x plus y plus s1 equals to 6. As we see that, y is equal to 0. This can be rewritten as 2x plus s1 equals to 6. Since s1 is non-negative, the largest value that x can achieve is to have s1 equals to 0 so that x is equals to 6 over 2 equals to 3. From the second constraint, as we see that y is equal to 0, this can be rewritten as x plus s2 equals to 8. Since s2 is non-negative, the largest value that x can achieve is to have s2 equals to 0, so that x is equal to 8 over 1, which is 8. Therefore, the constraint that limits the increase of x the most is the first constraint. Using the first constraint, we rewrite it by having x as the subject of this equation. We get x equals to 3 minus half y minus half of s1. Then we substitute this x into all other places containing x. I mean, we substitute x from the objective function and the other constraints. From the objective function, we get z equals to 3 times x plus 2y. We will get 9 plus half y minus 3 over 2s1. For the second constraint, we get x plus 2y plus s2 equals to 8. We will get 3 over 2y minus half s1 plus s2 equals to 5. Therefore, we can rewrite the system as to maximize z equals to 9 plus half y minus 3 over 2 s1, subject to the following two constraints, namely x plus half y plus half of s1 equals to 3, and 3 over 2 y minus half s1 plus s2 equals to 5, where all these variables are non negative. Please notice that even though the system is written differently now, it is equivalent to the previous system. 
Now we shall solve this system in a similar fashion as the previous one. Just imagine that we are given this linear programming problem to maximize this objective function subject to these constraints. There are five unknowns and three equations, so there are infinitely many solutions. We can take y equals to zero and s1 equals to zero, and we will have x equals to three, s2 equals to five, and z equals to nine. Therefore, taking y equals to zero, s1 equals to zero, x equals to three, s2 equals to five, and z equals to nine is one possible solution to the system. This corresponds to having a point x y equals to three zero, which is another vertex in the feasible region, which z equals to nine is its corresponding output value at three zero. To summarize, this is the optimization problem and a solution we obtain in this stage. Again, we make a judgment on whether or not we have reached an optimal solution by checking whether we can further increase the output value. We do so by checking the sign of the coefficients of each of the variables in the objective function. And we bear in mind that all variables are non-negative. Thus, since the coefficient of y is positive, if we increase the value of y, we can increase the value of z. Therefore, we have not yet reached an optimal solution. Therefore, our target is to increase y now. Now, to what extent I can increase the value of y, Again, to answer this question, we can observe our two constraints to see which restrictions are imposed to y. From the first constraint, we have x plus half y plus half s1 equals to 3. As we see that s1 equals to 0, this can be rewritten as x plus half y equals to 3. Since x is non-negative, the largest value that y can achieve is to have x equal to 0 so that y is 6. From the second constraint, as we see that s1 is 0, it can be rewritten as 3 over 2y plus s2 equals to 5. Since s2 is non-negative, the largest value that y can achieve is to have s2 equals to 0 so that y equals to 10 over 3. Therefore, the constraint that limits the increase of y the most is the second constraint. Using the second constraint, we rewrite it by having y as the subject of this equation. We get y equals to 10 over 3 plus 1 over 3 s1 minus 2 over 3 s2. Then we substitute this y into all other places containing y. I mean that we substitute y to the objective function and to the other constraints. For the objective function, we will get z equals to 9 plus half y minus 3 over 2 s1, which is equal to 32 over 3 minus 4 over 3 s1 minus 1 third of s2. Similarly, we will get x plus 2 over 3 s1 minus 1 over 3 s2 equals to 4 over 3. Therefore, we can rewrite the system as this one. Again, please notice that even though the system is written differently now, it is equivalent to the previous system as well as the first system. Now we shall solve this system in a similar fashion as the previous one. Just imagine that we are given a linear programming problem to maximize this objective function subject to these constraints. 
we can take s1 and s2 equals to 0 and we will get x equals to 4 over 3 y equals to 10 over 3 and z equals to 32 over 3 therefore taking s1 equals to 0 s2 equals to 0 x y z as this value is one possible solution to the system this corresponds to having a point x y equals to 4 over 3 10 over 3 which is a new vertex in the feasible region with z equals to 32 over 3 as its corresponding output value at this point to summarize this is the optimization problem and a solution that we obtained in this stage again we make a judgment on whether or not we have reached an optimal solution by checking whether we can further increase the output value this time since all coefficients of the variables in the objective functions are negative and we have taken s1 and s2 as zero already we cannot further reduce s1 and s2 to give a higher value of z because it will make them negative which is not allowed thus the optimal solution is reached therefore for our original problem the objective function has a maximum value of 32 over 3 which is achieved by taking x equals to 4 over 3 and y equals to 10 over 3 if we compare the three status of the system and the solutions we obtained by this simplest algebraic method with the graphical method we can see that we first start at the vertex 0 0 with output 0 then we moved to the adjacent vertex in the feasible region which is 3 0 with an improvement to the output to become z equals to 9 but it is not yet optimal finally we move to a new adjacent vertex 4 over 3 10 over 3 with the corresponding output 32 over 3 since there is no other movement that can give a further improvement to the output we reached an optimal solution and the mechanism stops therefore the objective function has the maximum value of 32 over 3 which is achieved at this point in the next video we shall refer to this example again but we shall present the simplest method by tabular form.